Good evening. Tonight, police are going public on a manhunt across Nottinghamshire, Leicestershire and Yorkshire as detectives link at least five serious attacks on women. Police are troubled about a robbery in Lincolnshire and a quite separate burglary in the Midlands in which wholly disproportionate violence was used. And the adolescent bank robbery that took place in Trafalgar Square. First, a burglary, a bungled but very callous burglary. We have good descriptions and anyone who knows who did it has every reason for calling in. The victims aren't especially wealthy, though they have dealings in the jewellery trade. They live in Stoke Heath in Bromsgrove in the Midlands. And we go back to Friday night, the 26th of April. Jack. What do you want? I've got a form which needs signing, mate. Form? What sort of form? We're digging up the roads in the morning. Well, what do you want me to sign a form for? Look, if you just open the door, it'll just take me a second to explain it fully. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. If you want me to sign a form, come round in the morning and I'll sign it in the morning. I don't like it, Jack. I think we should call the police. OK. The police arrived moments later, but the man had gone. It's the next morning, early on Saturday the 27th of April. Armstrong said about enlarging the state. You, Tony. Just a minute. Come on in. Yes. You're early today. Yeah, I thought I'd start now. We've been early. That's all right, Liam. Oh, yeah, of course I did. Sorry, I was a bit hesitant just now. I only. Uh... In the house, he employed Richard Norman Shaw, one of the most talented. Uh, cup of tea, Tony. Oh, yeah. White, two sugars, please. OK. I looked through the back window and I spotted a shirt on the lawn which I thought had blew up the line from the washing. And these two guys came from the back of the conservatory, grabbed all of me, and then they dragged me into the kitchen. I didn't know what they was after. I thought they'd come to kill me, actually, the way they was acting. I've never known people like it. Evil. Tell them! I said shut up! Yeah. We should be finding out how a local artist has brought a new perspective to the panoramic Look, there's nothing to do with me, mate. Look. I said shut it. To do the same, though with a different shape. Lie down! Face the wall! I thought I'd dare he come into our house and intimidate our privacy. He has no rights. He said, you heard what I said, lie down and face the wall. He slapped the handcuffs on my left arm, which he did, next to Tony. He grabbed everything he could off the dressing table. He even turned around and gripped my diamond stud earrings out my ears. Then he got hold of my hand and ripped my wedding ring off my finger. Where's the safe? I don't know what you're talking about. I know you've got a safe. Now tell me where it is! Listening to him argue, was, you know, I thought, well, Linda, just give him what he wants, because if you don't, he's going to do something really, really nasty. I was just lay there waiting to hear one shot and just feel the next one. He told me to open my mouth and he put this gun in my mouth to touch my bottom of my teeth. And 
for one five minutes. I just thought this was it. I just thought he was going to pull the trigger straight away. And uh, he said if I didn't tell him where the safe was, he was going to go downstairs and he was going to blow my husband's brains out. Then he was going to come upstairs and blow my brains all over the bed. Where's the safe? And I thought, well, I've got to do something to try and help, just to try and help. And I was frightened, which I missed, I was frightened. As Linda and Tony called on neighbours to raise the alarm, the robbers escaped over the back garden wall. They were next seen in Barn Close. It wasn't really long after 8 o'clock and I was over in the car. I heard footsteps, well, jogging really. And I looked up and saw two figures actually jog past me on the other side of the pavement. I was walking along Teeswater Close on my way to meet my boss for work. I saw two males walking down Kerry Hill. I got a, the better view of the uh, white man. Um, he was approximately 5 foot 11 tall to 6 foot. Very big build, quite muscular build. He had shortish hair. He also had uh, what I would describe as a goatee beard. Let's just get these off, mate. Well, I just passed out after a while. The next thing I remember was when the policeman took the handcuffs off me. I was shook up, really. Really shook up. Can you tell me which way they went? Well, Steve Walters, obviously a terrifying, violent attack. Do you believe it was planned, or was it a random burglary? The robbers uh, seemed to, to, to know what they were looking for and had some information, like the fact that there was a safe in the house. It seems highly unlikely to me that this was a random attack. More likely that Mrs Jones was targeted because she was well known in the jewellery quarter of Birmingham. In the past, she had bought and sold jewellery um, as a hobby. Mm. And uh, it's probably because of someone had that information that she has been targeted. And that visitor at about 9.30 the previous evening, do you believe that that had something to do with the subsequent burglary? It does seem very suspicious, yes. Um, the man was very insistent. He really wanted them to open the door. The, the man is described as being 5 foot 9 to 5 foot 10 inches tall, of medium build, mid to late 20s. Um, he had short, dark, afro-tight hair and possibly a moustache. His physical description is very similar to that of the second robber. Mm. It could well be that this is one and the same man. Now, you have a very good description of the man who you believe is the ringleader, don't you, as we see from the EFIT. Can you just tell us again what he looked like? Yes, uh, that's right. Uh, this, this man is described as being white. He's 5 foot 11 to 6 foot, inches, six foot tall. He uh, has a muscular build, again described as being mid to late 20s. He has what is described as short, dark hair with a goatee beard. And uh, it's also, also described that he had uh, a growth of stubble on his cheeks, uh, generally scruffy appearance. Mm. I really need to find out who this man is. Mm. Now, they left behind a few clues, didn't they, I think? Yes. This they left bag. behind this leather bag. It's, uh, it's very unusual. Uh, most likely a carpenter's bag, mm. but it actually contained three, three newspapers, one of which is the local Birmingham Post, uh, dated in April of, of this year. It may well be that uh, this may suggest that the, the people responsible are from the Birmingham area and not the Bromsgrove area. Right. And now quite a lot of jewellery was taken, as we know, and a lot of it uh, quite valuable, particularly this particular uh, lady's 18-carat gold Rolex watch. Now, there is a serial number on the one that was taken. It's number 69178. And also this gent's Cartier uh, gold lighter, the serial number on that one is A39143. So obviously, if you've been sold any of these items or you know where they are, then 
then, then we want to hear from you. Yes, it could be a vital piece of information from us. I would stress anybody who has, has had any dealings with that property to contact us tonight. Steve Walters, thank you very much indeed. Well, do call, please, 0500 600 600. The detectives and our BBC researchers are here waiting for help on this case now. 0500 600 600. Or you can call the incident room in Redditch, and that's uh, 01527 584 treble 8. That's Redditch 584 treble 8. Last July, police in Leeds had to cope with a sadistic sex attack. A woman parking in a multi-storey car park was confronted by a man holding a knife. He abducted her in her own car and then abandoned her in Globe Road beside the Leeds to Liverpool Canal. He stole her money and a switch card which was later used in Dewsbury. Now, scientific evidence has linked that crime with a rape in Nottingham three years before. But in fact, detectives going through their files discovered striking similarities with other unsolved crimes, attacks in Bradford, Leeds and Leicester, which happened in the early 1980s. In one, the victim was also dumped at Globe Road, at the canal, though in this case she was thrown into the water, bound hand and foot, and that's regarded as attempted murder. The offender must now rank as one of the most wanted men in Britain. Detective Superintendent Bob Taylor needs your help. Obviously, I haven't got into details, but the sadism, the violence of this man is, is really quite considerable. It is, and especially so after the sexual attack, which is quite unusual. And this is a feature which we would expect uh, may occur in uh, any relationship that he's been in. And uh, an ex-wife uh, may uh, recognise this. You haven't got a good picture of the man. You've got a fairly good description, then. Yes, he's a white male. Uh, he's in his 30s to early 40s. Five foot ten, slim build with light brown hair, uh, short at the front, long at the back. Uh, he speaks with a Scottish accent, which may be false, uh, but he is a cigarette smoker. Now, there's an extraordinary, what is it, nine year gap between the last series of attacks in 1984 and the first of the known new ones in 1993. Why, why do you suppose there's that gap? Well, there's a number of possibilities there. One may be that he's in prison. And, uh, of course, one of my appeals would be to prison officers and police officers because the offence may have been unconnected with these. But it could have been in a stable relationship which has broken down uh, and has caused the offences to start again, or in the army or abroad. So uh, it might be that, his, as you say, he was in a stable relationship, that, that a woman would know him, would recognise him. I mean, what, apart from that fairly vague description, what would it for her. Why would she recognise him as the man to ring in about tonight? Well, he spoke in very disparaging terms about an ex-wife in at least two attacks and re referred to his wife being blonde. And uh, we have DNA evidence and, uh, you know, I'm appealing to an ex-wife who may recognise herself and his description and can link him with these places. Please ring him because if you're wrong we can eliminate the person. And would she have recognised him as a violent character within their relationship? I would expect he would have shown extreme violence to her. Were these always sex attacks? I mean, the interesting uh, at the beginning is that he pretended it wasn't going to turn into a sex attack. He just wanted to steal the car. Quite a striking feature of the offences is that in the initial stages, he told the victims, I only want the car, I'm being chased by the police, and it was some considerable time into the period when he's driving around with the victims that suddenly they become aware that this is going to be a sex attack. So there might be other victims or other people who've been confronted by him who haven't reported it as a sex attack, or so maybe haven't, haven't reported an incident at all. That's, that's quite possible they may have escaped before it actually got to that stage. All the attacks took place on, on weekdays, I think. Mondays to Fridays. Is that significant? I think this could be significant. He could work in one of these places or all these places. He could have been there with a work colleague and, uh, you know, a work colleague may be able to fit the pieces together. OK. Incidentally, it's thought he's a fairly bad driver, at least uh, not very really used to driving a car. If you think you know him, if you work with him, above all, if you might have had a relationship with him, if you've been attacked by him or, or been robbed by him or just might have been, if you're a prison officer and think he's been inside, please call. There is DNA evidence, so it's a straightforward elimination of the innocent. So don't worry about calling 0500 600 600. That's our free call number, 0500 600 600. Or try Milgarth Police Station in Leeds. Our free phone number, 0800 318 001. 0800 318 001. Now, here's Detective Constable Jackie Hames with some rather less disturbing crimes.
In fact, two people wanted for deception. First, a bank in Ashford, Kent, on a Thursday afternoon four months ago. This man has credit cards that were stolen from a nearby office. He's perfectly recognisable, but who is he? The cashier was suspicious and asked him to wait while she made some checks on him. After several minutes, he bottled out and headed for the door. Tell us who he is. The number to call is 01233 619 188. That's Ashford in Kent, 619 188. We know who this is, though. She's Marion Desiree Nichols, sometimes known as Marion Persuade. She encouraged people to invest their savings in an investment scheme, and eventually she gathered almost £100,000. After a while, she and the money vanished. She was last seen in the Bayswater Road of London area a few weeks ago, but where is she now? She's five foot four, aged 41, with long dark hair, a deep voice, and what's described as an affected, over-educated accent. 0500 600 600, or you can call the local police on 0181 246 0631. That's 0181 246 0631. Some news now from last month. 500 calls came in on the attacks on courting couples at Farley Mount in Hampshire, including two from other rape victims who'd not reported their ordeals before. One knew her assailant, but both are thought to be unrelated to the crimes we reconstructed. Incidentally, a man arrested yesterday for another serious offence in Hampshire is also thought to be unconnected with the Farley Mount attacks. There's been some progress on the post office robbery in Hastings, Sussex. Detectives have yet to identify the men responsible, but they now know who the two men were seen earlier on a petrol station forecourt. A local man recognised himself and his companion and came forward for elimination. And the death of Danny Marlowe, run over by a car in Leicestershire, that's still not been resolved, though a key witness was traced because of calls and he's been eliminated. Two arrests, though, one for an armed robbery, took place just as Crime Watch Update went on the air, though, of course, we couldn't say so at the time. And the other is a man wanted for a series of deceptions. He's in custody awaiting charges. And finally, the so-called road rage case in Kent. You remember Stephen Cameron was killed last month in an apparently unprovoked attack just off the M25. Well, police believe the killer drove off in a Land Rover Discovery. Our appeal produced an avalanche of calls, well over a thousand in fact, some of which led to new lines of inquiry. Police have now eliminated many local Land Rover Discoveries, but as you may have seen in the news, they have yet to trace a blue-grey Discovery. Registration L794 JTF. Now, it's registered to an Anthony Francis who lived in Bridgen Road in Bexley in Kent. Police have been trying to trace him since he left that address last month. Now, Anthony Francis may not be his real name. He's thought to be in his late 20s to early 30s. He's six feet tall and stockily built. If you know where he or, in fact, his vehicle is, please call us now on 0500 600 600 or the Incident Room Direct, and they're on 01227 817 028. That's Canterbury, 817 028. In that roundup, Jill mentioned sex attacks at Farley Mount in Hampshire from the appeals last month. And earlier tonight, we appealed about a terrible series of sexual attacks in Leicestershire, Nottinghamshire, and Yorkshire, all linked to the same man. Now, these types of crime are hard to cover because appeals might cause more fear than these really unusual cases warrant. On the other hand, they're among the most important crimes to solve. The victims need peace of mind, and the rapists often repeat their crimes until they're caught. And so now we appeal for help about a crime in March in Hampshire, near Southampton. The victim is 19. She comes from Hythe, which is just outside Southampton, and tells her story in the hope that you or someone watching can stop this man doing what he did again. I've lived here for quite a few years now with my father and my younger brother. I'm studying A-level photography at the local college, and it's a really enjoyable course. It's quite creative. It's very satisfying to look at a photograph and know that you've taken it and you've processed it and you've printed it yourself. The evening of Saturday, March the 23rd, Susie had met up with friends and was heading for a local pub. This resident was on his way to a friend's house. He noticed a man in the main street, Southampton Road, and walked behind him for quite a while. He remembered him because the smart leather jacket seemed odd on a man wearing very tatty trainers. Susie and her friends spent half an hour at the Croft in nearby Dibden Purlieu. We were in a pretty good mood, um, just talking about what happened during the day and what we'd done. 
Um, we just decided to have a drink. 20 minutes later and about a mile away, this is Water Lane in Dibden Purlieu. A motorist noticed a pedestrian strikingly like the one seen earlier in Hythe. I saw these two people. I was about 150 yards away and I straight away thought something's not right. And the man was spooky. He was transfixed by this girl. Wouldn't stop looking at her. I was going to stop and get out and ask if everything was OK. The girl smiled. And if you're in trouble, you don't smile. So, no problem. You know, I thought, well, it's not what I thought. This woman could be the single most important witness. Saturday, March the 23rd, in Dibden Purlieu. Long, wavy brown hair, shiny black trousers and a brown jacket. Who was she? Hi, Nikki. Yeah, it's Susie. How you doing? Listen, it, what are you up to? Who's there? OK, is it OK if I come over just for a little while for a chat? Nikki's house was a 20-minute walk away, a route Susie had taken since she was a little girl at school. Passing the local parade of shops, she stopped to buy some crisps and was recorded on the security system. At this point, there's nothing to suggest she was being followed. About 10 minutes later, halfway to her friend's house and perhaps 20 yards from where the man had been seen following another woman. I turned around and there's someone behind me on the other side of the road. But I didn't feel threatened or anything. I just assumed it was someone else walking. Was this the same man? Had he left his jacket in a car parked somewhere or hidden it nearby? Soon, Susie was passing Nodeswood School, and the man had overtaken her. She assumed he lived in one of the houses that back onto the road. Shut up! Don't say anything! I was terrified. I tried to keep really calm throughout everything and to talk to him, because I'd heard that it's best to act in that way. I can remember what he looked like, and even though I try and forget, I can't. He was about five foot ten-ish, I would say. And he was quite big built. And he had a beer gut. And he had quite dark hair and a little beard and moustache and a gold earring in his left ear. After the attack was over, I was shaking quite a lot, I think, because knowing it was over. And then he walked off one way and I walked, then ran in the opposite direction. A few minutes later, a man, now wearing a jacket, was seen walking from the area through the residential streets leading back to Hythe. Back in Hythe, ten minutes later, the earlier witness was now walking home. Have you got the time, please? Uh, yeah, it's 9.25. All right, cheers. It's really changed my life. I can't even walk to my friends who live just up the road in the dark and when I come home I have to check all the rooms and I can't sleep unless I have the lights on and I'm just scared he's going to be everywhere. 0, 500, 600, 600 if you think you can help. The offender might have come from the Southampton area or from further afield perhaps working in the district and as I said he may have had a car. Take a look at him again even if he's changed his appearance in some way, maybe trimmed off his beard, for instance, he's still fairly identifiable. Five foot ten, heavily built, with a beer belly. There is a reward. There's also some scientific evidence, so many names can be very, very easily eliminated. 0500 600 600. Or call Hythe Police on 01 703 845 511. That's 01 703, which is the code for Southampton, 845 511. 
Some great calls coming in now with some new appeals. Here's Superintendent David Hatcher. I've got pictures of two people you might know. First, a man who seems charming and by all accounts he's fairly clever, but appearances can be deceptive. He's wanted in connection with a truly horrible attack on a cinema in Bristol. Robbers use baseball bats and knives to club and stab the manager. Hugh Can Patterson may know something about the case. He's 35, medium height, medium build, with what one witness describes as sloping shoulders. Where is he now? 0500 600 600 or call local officers direct on 0117 945 5755. That's Bristol, 945 5755. Now to Sealand in North Wales. The man who marches into this petrol station is carrying a butcher's knife. He's quite identifiable, early 20s, 5 foot 10, dark hair with a ponytail and a goatee beard. His manner was aggressive. The cashier was terrified. Call us if you know him on 0500 600 600 or you can ring the local police direct on 01 978 294 736. That's Wrexham 294 736. Now briefly, the, uh, the watch and the lighter that we showed you earlier, we got some of the numbers modelled up, so let me just remind you again, the serial or the model number on the Rolex watch is 69178, that's the number you should look out for if you're offered that watch, and on the lighter it's A31943. Now we've had a lot of calls coming in already, I must tell you, on the aggravated burglary we've had uh, several names being suggested, two people have called in giving the same name, the caller has been offered jewellery fitting that description, that's the one we were just telling you about, the, the burglary, the aggravated burglary in, uh, in Bromsgrove. On that horrifying seri series of abductions and rapes, uh, a vi victim of a similar attack has come forward. We've also had calls from women suggesting that it may be their partners who are responsible for, for these awful attacks. So a lot more cases as well to tell you about later in the programme. And now to a distressing crime, because it involves a gang of little more than children. It's an appeal largely to black communities in South London. Indeed, in this case, responsible black people undoubtedly hold the key. The robbers are youngsters going badly off the rails. Now, they ordered minicabs from Streatham to take them to central London. They then tried to rob a bank. Now, this is Trafalgar Square, early on a Friday afternoon in May, seconds before the robbery. And this is just outside the bank. Now, these lads are all in their teens. Are some of them the robbers, or are they witnesses who saw what happened? Police need to trace them and to talk to them. The robbers got away with some cash, but it sprayed them with red dye. So some of them would have been stained with ink for days. So it's important these youngsters are identified before the robbers do something worse. 0500 600 600, or call the local police direct on 0171 321 7613. That's 0171 321. 7613. Next, two men caught on camera stripping off and changing clothes. The significance is that they were taking off disguises. They just robbed a bank around the corner. Here they are in the bank in High Street, Leicester. They had a handgun and they stuffed holdalls with several hundred pounds. This is 150 yards away, down an alleyway, where presumably they thought they weren't overlooked. They both have shoulder-length hair, which looks distinctive when they've got their suits on. Both are in their late 20s or early 30s, and this is one of them. Is he local? Now, the robbers left behind these jackets, and one of them bears distinctive writing on it in the name Thomason. Please call only if you can recognise the writing there or if you can identify the robbers. 0500 600 600, 0500 600 600, or call local officers on 0116 248 5158. That's Leicester, 0116 248 5158. Now, again, here's Detective Constable Jackie Hames. With appeals for two men, both described as dangerous. First, the search for Michael Sheeran. He's wanted in connection with the indecent assault and murder of an 88-year-old woman in Leytonstone, East London. Mrs Eileen Maskell was terribly injured before she died, and this man then disappeared. This is actually a computer-generated image. It's based on an old photograph and has been aged, suggests what he might look like today. He's 48 and has a soft Scottish accent. He's originally from Glasgow and there's a tattoo of a heart over his own heart.
He's probably living rough and busking. He plays the guitar. Call us right away if you know where he is, 0500 600 600, or call the local police on 0181 217 5433. That's 0181 217 5433. Now a snapshot of what may be a murder suspect's birthday party. This is Jason Moss and this was his 27th birthday back in March. The year before, a 24-year-old man had been repeatedly shot in Manchester. After six weeks, the victim died of his injuries. Mr Moss, Moss vanished soon afterwards, so police haven't had a chance to interview him. Who's protecting him? 0500 600 600. That's here in London or in Manchester. Call 0161 856 4370. That's Manchester 856 4370. Our final reconstruction tonight is an armed robbery. It happened the day of our last programme, in fact, Thursday, the 23rd of May, at Woodhall Spa, a quiet village in rural Lincolnshire. Our film barely hints at the violence that took place, but there are lots of sightings and a good chance that somebody will recognise who did it. It's Monday the 20th of May, three days before the robbery. At 9.40am, a local man driving by became suspicious of a stranger in the village. He kept looking at me and then across the post office and back again. He just gave me a very uncomfortable feeling. Anyway, as I decided to walk up the pavement to the right, I stopped and looked over my shoulder and uh, saw him disappearing in what I thought was a gentleman's toilet at the time. Minutes later, he encountered the man again. On the day of the robbery, a postman was returning to the sorting office, having finished his rounds. I was happy, I was in a good mood. I really do like my job and I want to stay with the Royal Mail. I arrived back at 1.40 p.m. And it's usual procedure to go round to the postmaster's house. All done, then? Yeah, just a few things to sort out and then I'll be off. OK, then. And then I went into the back of the sorting office to do various paperwork. As soon as I saw them, I particularly noticed their top front teeth were rather overcrowded. I was immediately struck by how similar they were facially. They could have been brothers. One man was about five foot ten, slim, probably about 18 to 25, with medium brown coloured hair. The other man was slightly shorter, very slim, late 20s to early 30s and his hair was exactly the same style as the other. A few minutes later, in the Mal pub car park nearby, two men fitting a similar description were seen next to a light brown or gold four-wheel drive vehicle, possibly a Range Rover. I came back from the shops and saw the same men again, but they were both wearing jackets this time. One of them was wearing a typical red and navy postman's jacket and they were both wearing black woolen hats. I immediately thought that one must be the new postman and he was just taking his brother to work with him. Inside the sorting office, the postman was clocking off at the end of his shift. And all of a sudden, I was punched to the right side of the face all sorts of things run through my mind, um, whether I was going to live or die, my family, my children. Um, very frightening, very frightening. Lay down on the floor. No one's going to get out. Right. I'm going to get down and up. I'll see you in a while then. Be quiet. Get up and keep your head down. Shut the door. Shut the door. Shout her down. Okay, okay, take it easy. But you can't do here upstairs because the television's You will shout her down. Are you listening? Yeah, all right. I'll shout it down. Don't worry. 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 Don't worry.
Pam, can you come down? I don't panic, Pam. Right, shut the door. And then you two on the floor. Take it easy. You take it easy. I'll use this. A large amount of cash was stolen, along with various stamps and vehicle excise licenses. On their way out, they bumped into another post office employee. Get down there, out of the way. My fear was that we would all be shot, without a doubt. They meant what they said. We were all lucky, really, to, to have survived it because I'm sure they would have not hesitated but to have used the weaponry they had. Several people saw them escape down a footpath leading to the Mal pub car park where two men, possibly the same ones, were spotted earlier. Could this be where they made their getaway? Well, David Hayward, the uh, Mal Pub car park features quite a lot in this situation. Do you believe that that was where the getaway car may have been parked? Well, yes, it uh, could well have been. The Mal uh, uh, car park itself is uh, directly opposite the footpath where these men were last seen to run down. So what was the car like that they were by? Well, they were if, seen... if indeed they are the two, two of the same men who were seen earlier. Well, we can't get away from the fact that the, the two men were seen in the car park itself that do match the, uh, that of the EFITs. The car that they were walking behind, we know it was a what make, we don't know, but we are quite sure of the colour, light brown to gold. But also, there could have been innocent people, and so you want them to come forward with it. If that is the case, we can come forward with it, and the it from the court.
he may have left in a grey car. Who is he? And, of course, where are the paintings? Well, if you to trace them, please call 0500 600 600 or call the Hertfordshire Police Direct on 01992 533 Welcome back. We've had a huge response to those abductions and rapes going back a number of years in Nottinghamshire, Yorkshire and Leicestershire. There have been about a hundred calls, some very positive about the aggravated burglary in Bromsgrove. And we're pleased to say that we may have found the 17th century portrait of Henry Pye, stolen earlier this year from Bishop Stortford. He may actually be resting in an auction house in London. Well, let's start with those sadistic sex attacks spread across ten years, slightly more actually, in several counties. Tonight, police have described how they have linked the cases, and they're looking for a man described as in his 30s, 5 foot 10, slim, with light brown hair, a Scottish accent, or at least he could put on a Scottish accent, who smokes, who lives Leicestershire, Nottinghamshire and Yorkshire, who may have a criminal record for violence and uh, may have had a relationship which is very, very violent with a woman. And Bob Taylor, I think over 125 calls so far, and they look very, very promising. Yes, there's been quite a lot of people named. Um, Clearly, we're going to have to do some research, but such as uh, you know, people who are putting together the blonde ex-wife, explaining some reason for the period that there'd been uh, a gap, and uh, people with previous uh, very serious sexual offences. Now, that gap you talked about, there was a series of offences that went up to, to 1984, and then another one that started after 1993, and, and several of these are suggesting reasons for that, that either he's in a relationship or he's in prison. Several yes. from prison officers, I know, as well. Quite a lot from prison officers, ex-police officers and, of course, uh, ex-wives. Have you got the, the crucial cause here, do you think? Well, it's quite possible. We're not going to be able to tell tonight. We're going to have to do some research on it. But I'm, I'm quite uh, startled by the response and I'm uh, extremely pleased. Good. Bob Taylor, thanks very much indeed. And now that bungled burglary in Stoke Heath and Bromsgrove. Two men callously attacked a couple in their own home. Where's the safe? I don't know what you're talking about. I know you've got a safe. Now tell me where it is. Steve Walters, a response here and also in your incident room. Yes, we've had an excellent response. In excess of uh, 100 calls received this evening, uh, both at the Crime Watch uh, studios and at uh, Redditch in the incident room. Some very good information has been put into, uh, into the system. Um, some names have been put forward for, for the suspects. So I'm very, very pleased with the response. Now let's have a look at the uh, e-fit of the one particular one that you believe is the ringleader. Explain what he looks like. Yes, this is a, uh, a white male. 5 foot 11 to 6 foot tall, the muscular build, 
uh, aged uh, between 25 and 30 years, um, had short dark hair with the goatee beard, and he had uh, some stubble on his cheeks. And there was another burglar who was black who possibly called at the house the night before. That's, that's right, yes. Um, we now believe that this possibly is the second robber. Now, what about the jewellery? Any calls from people who've been offered the jewellery? The carat, uh, 18 carat Rolex watch and uh, the lighter? Yes, we've had some information uh, about the jewellery which we'll be following up, um, but there seems to be some confusion with the, the serial number, and we believe that is the model number that we've given out now. So right. that's something that we'll be following up. But that is the correct number, whether it's a serial number or a model number? That's right, yes. Okay, thanks very much indeed. Good luck with that. Thank you. Well, first of all, on the Ashford Deceiver, we've had a large number of calls. The same name's been given three times. Six other callers have given us an address where we can find the name. Uh, on that Sealand Armed Robbery, again, lots of calls. We've had four callers giving the same name. On the Trafalgar Square Robbery, five calls giving the same name of the same person and also four calls giving other names, including a lawyer who's had dealings with a couple of those faces uh, that we're interested in. Cash converters... Over 20 calls, several names suggested for the two offenders. Um, one of them has been named twice. And then lastly, on the Leicester robbery, again, 20 calls, two names offered that look interesting, and one of them has a background that fits in with the situation. Got about 130 calls on the sex attack at Dibden Purlieu near Hythe in Hampshire. A 19-year-old woman was walking to a friend's house when a man followed her, a man who'd been noticed by other local residents. Kevin Walton... A lot of calls, how good are they? Yes, a lot of calls, uh, one or two very good calls. Uh, the vast majority are suggesting names for the CD fit, which we'll work through in our own time over the next few weeks. Um, say one or two interesting ones, one in particular from a young lady who said she was raped whilst in Southampton on the 22nd of March, the day before the Hyde rape, when the offender was of a similar description to the Hyde rapist, so that looks quite good. Had she reported that rape before, or is this the first time it's reported? She had not reported it to the police before. So this could be a very, very significant new witness? Yes, it could, yes. We'd be very keen to see her in the next what, few days. What, one thing you were trying to trace is a woman who was seen on the Saturday, that's the 23rd of March, in Water Lane, she was in shiny black trousers, was crossing the road. Again, a very significant witness. Has she come forward? No, she hasn't come forward, and we've had nobody suggesting who it might be. So, again, she could be very significant. We, we would be desperate for her to come forward. She could have some very useful um, evidence for us. Okay, meanwhile a lot of names to try and work through. Yes. Jackie. We know the names of the next four, but where are they? First up, Marion Desire Nichols. Wanted to, we want to speak to her about a deception in London. Definitely the exception tonight, but very few calls. If you know where she is, please call us. Secondly, Hukin Van Roy Patterson. About, we want to speak to him about a robbery in Bristol. Over 30 calls, quite a number of sightings, but if you know where he is now, please do keep calling. Michael Alexander Sheeran, we want to speak to about that terrible indecent assault murder in East London. Well over 40 calls, lots of sightings of him busking and possibly sleeping rough, so lots to work on there. But again, please call us if you know where he is. And finally, Jason Moss, we want to speak to him about that shooting in Manchester. Some extremely good calls and well over 20 uh, people have rung in, citing him in various different places, including a landlady who he stayed with until last Thursday. Perhaps he's staying with you now if he is, please call us. Well, finally, another Hello. appeal to catch some really unpleasant men, at least two of them, Sorry. who attacked a post office in Woodhall Spa in rural Lincolnshire. Shut the door! Shut the door! David Hayward, some names have been put forward, we believe? That's right, we've had an excellent report, uh, response, not only in the studio, but also back at the police station, with people giving us various names, the identity of these two, and also some of them being brothers. Well, that's significant, because the witnesses believe that they did look quite alike, didn't they? Well, that's right. Um, I'll just remind people again, I mean, both these men looked uh, similar facially, both of them having this overcrowded, crooked teeth. Yeah. And we'd like to hear from anybody again that may yeah. give us suggestions of these uh, two men's identity. Mm. And also you want to eliminate, or indeed find, the car that you think may have been used as a getaway car. That's right. We must stress that we, we, we believe this vehicle is a 4x4 and it's a light brown or gold colour. We're not sure of the make. We'd like to hear of anybody that may have seen that vehicle, even if it is to eliminate it from the inquiry. Particularly in and around the Malpub car park. That's correct, it? yes. You've also had some tourists ringing in, I believe. That's right. People staying in the area during that week have phoned in with uh, names yeah. of people and uh, descriptions of people they've seen. Well, let's hope it leads yeah. to something positive. Thank you. Can I just that one again? It really has been a marvellous response tonight, but uh, that's it for tonight and indeed for this month. Indeed, until the autumn. We'll be back then with a new series of Crime Watch, actually in September. 
Do keep helping, though. The lines here to the studio are closing, but we'll show you local numbers in a moment. And you can always ring on these or any other crimes. The answer phone's at Crime Stoppers. They're a free phone number, 0800 555 one. Watch out as a safe crime watch in September. Meanwhile, have a happy, crime-free summer. And from all of us, good night. Good night.